the fall feast begins in this tension between joy and repentance. And, and we see that in its fulfillment with the tribulation and Jesus's return. There, there's this, there's the t- this tension between the grand finale and Jesus coming back and the pain that will be during that, that tribulation period for those who reject God. So when we move into tabernacles, the scene here is one of rejoicing. Tabernacles is about abundance. It is about rejoicing. It is about being joyful and dwelling in the presence of God. You're not supposed to mourn or be sad during the Feast of Tabernacles. It's about thanking him and enjoying his provision and his blessing, enjoying his harvest, the Feast of Tabernacles. So in reading Nehemiah, It really stood out to me that when the people found the scriptures, remember in Nehemiah, he built the wall and they were finished building the wall in a little 25, which is interesting because that's the anniversary of the first day of creation too. But they finished building the wall on a little 25. And when they finished building it, they found the scriptures. And so they started reading the Bible. They started reading the scroll And when they did, they read about the feast of the Lord and they were cut to the heart because they didn't know that they were supposed to do these things. They were cut to the heart and they wanted to repent, but they were encouraged to first keep the feast, that it's a time of joy, to not mourn for what they had lost yet, but instead to keep the feast first. And so... They kept the Feast of Tabernacles. We see that right after, right after they found it, they they did all that they could to then turn around really quickly and keep the Feast of Tabernacles um, the ne- the very next month. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles starts on the 15th day of Tishri. So 20 days later, they are keeping this beautiful feast and they're building sukkahs and they're keeping they're keeping the feast of the lord and they kept it then till the 24th day because the the feast of tabernacles is seven days and then you add the eighth day and we'll talk about that too so they kept it all and then after they had finished this then they mourned for what they had lost then they mourned for their ignorance. The entire time during the feast and during the morning, the word of God was central. It was all about getting back to the word of God, knowing God. So faith comes by hearing. They heard the truth and they believed it. And then they immediately wanted to act upon it. And when you hear the truth and you believe it, action follows. If you believe something, you act out of what you believe. Everything that you do is is really, you're doing something out of what you really believe. So here, um, Leviticus 23, starting in 29. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you the first day, the boughs of the goodly trees, the branches of palm trees, the boughs of thick trees, willows, the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. And you shall keep it as a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the, in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt I am the Lord your God and so that that's what Israel read they read that and they're like we we should be doing this this is this is something that we're supposed to be doing for all of our generations as a way for God to be right in the middle of his people and he's teaching his people so Jesus delayed going Um, Jesus kept, of course, he kept the Feast of Tabernacles because all of these feasts are about Jesus. These are the Feast of the Lord. Jesus is our Lord. And all these feasts are about him. Passover, of course, was about him. He fulfilled Passover. He's the Passover lamb. He's the unleavened bread. 
He's the first fruits of the resurrection. He rose on the Feast of First Fruits. Holy Spirit came at Pentecost and Jesus will return during the fall feast. So Jesus delayed going to the Feast of Tabernacles until the middle or the fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And so as with everything in scripture, there are layers and there's a reason. He, everything that God does, he does for a reason to teach us about himself. So tabernacles is the finale of the feast of the Lord and God's goal of redeeming mankind to himself. It represents the goal and the full eight of creation. Remember it's eight days to dwell in the presence of God. Note for Israel, this was a remembrance of dwelling with God in temporary dwellings on the way to the promised land, which is a type and shadow of the kingdom of God. God wants us to dwell with him in our midst as we journey. He wants us to, in, in the process, you know, we're not there yet. We're not in the kingdom yet, but he wants us to continue dwelling with him in that process because we're all in temporary dwellings right now. We're all in these earth suits. We all are in a tabernacle right now. And as long, and he wants us to dwell, he wants to be in the midst of us. And that is, of course, the Holy Spirit being in us. It's God in us, the hope of glory. And so here, Jesus, God himself is in the middle of his people at the very feast that celebrates this, that celebrates God being in the middle of his people at, in the fulfillment. So looking at creation week, with eight days representing the seventh as the Sabbath kingdom of Messiah and the eighth as a Sabbath of a new heaven and a new earth. We see this beautiful pattern that God gave in the Feast of Tabernacles. He gave a pattern of creation again. And so the sun, the moon, and the stars were created on the fourth day of creation. Remember, the sun, moon, and the stars were created on the fourth day. Jesus is the light of the world. The sun represents the sun. Moon represents the church, the bride. We reflect Jesus's light. We are salt and light. We, the Holy Spirit in us, the restrainer, restrains the decay. Also, the stars. God promised Abraham he would be the father of nations like sand and stars. All this happened in the fourth millennium. Jesus came, the church began. All of this started in the fourth millennium on the fourth day. So God has given us the snapshot of his plan in the Feast of Tabernacles. He gave the first glimpse with Sabbath, and then he finished his redemptive plan with a picture of his completion again in Tabernacles with the added eighth day at the end of his, of his entire redemption calendar. You know, when he gave us the redemption calendar to begin with in Leviticus, he starts with Sabbath. When he lines out the feast of the Lord, the first one he starts with is the weekly Sabbath, the weekly feast. And here we see the final feast of the Lord is also a reminder of the Sabbath. It's a reminder of creation and that beautiful picture of the end from the beginning with 6,000 years given to man. The Sabbath millennial reign of Jesus and then a new heaven and a new earth and eternity. <laughs>